You think you look strong? You're just a cheap knockoff. Oh, no, no, no. I'm the upgrade. Welcome to Herogasm, everyone. This will be my full video for The Boys, Season 3, Episode 6. Obviously, it was the Herogasm episode, but that was only part of the episode. There were so many crazy WTF moments, so many Easter eggs, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes, and just careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. But the title of Episode 6 was Herogasm. It's a reference to the comics event, and it was a little bit different from the comics version. It was like a toned-down version, but it was still almost as crazy. The version in the comics is meant to be like this annual retreat for superheroes that's basically them doing like the worst version of Spring Break, most degenerate version of Spring Break you've ever seen. But the version on the TV show, they just turned into like this crazy underground party that was hosted by superheroes that had moved around at different locations since the 50s, which was started by Soldier Boy and Stormfront. And I love the idea that someone as patriotic as Soldier Boy is, as much as he thinks about that, because he was created during World War II, just like Stormfront, started Herogasm with Liberty, who was Stormfront herself, just using a different name. Like nowadays, people probably wouldn't care about that as much, but he was literally sleeping with the enemy, like they fought on opposite sides of World War II. He's more thick-brained than an anime character. But the actual episode starts with the Deep doing a parody of the Gal Gadot Imagine video, which you all probably remember, it got dunked on so hard, and rightfully so, because it was one of the cringiest videos ever, and obviously the version that they do on The Boys is meant to be the cringiest video you've ever seen. And for the episode, they got a bunch of different celebrities to do parody cameo scenes for it. It was Patton Oswalt who also did a cameo scene during season two as the voice of the Deep's gills. There was A-Train because he's doing all kinds of cringy stuff this season. Josh Gad, Mila Kunis, and Ashton Kutcher. That was pretty weird. Elizabeth Banks, Kumail Nanjiani, Aisha Tyler, who actually hosted the boys after show during season two. Rose Byrne and Black Noir pulled up the rear, holding up the car because he either can't talk or he won't talk. We saw what happened to him in the flashbacks. He got super injured, so that could have hurt his vocal cords, but it is possible that he can talk. He's meant to be a little bit different than the comic book version of Black Noir, like without getting into spoilers about his secret identity. There's meant to be like a big twist with his character that you don't find out about to like the very end of the comic story, and they've changed that for the TV show. He's not meant to be like the comic book version. But there are Easter eggs for the big twist with Black Noir in the comics. They just played in a different way, in more of a Moon Knight kind of alternate personality way, which I'll get to in a second, because that was a big deal. Like, they went full Moon Knight during this episode with Homelander with a dissociative identity. How many other personalities you got inside there, Homelander? Also, one of the details that I loved about this, like, this is meant to be a pretty authentic YouTube player here. They were pretty accurate with it. The Deep is also using it to sell his merch, his tell-all book about the Church of the Collective titled Deeper. Gotta sling that merch. The whole reason why Vought creates more superheroes is to create more merchandising opportunities, but that's until recently when San Edgar says, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We found a better way to make money with this Compound V. The reason why Homelander freaks out when he sees the footage of Soldier Boy isn't because of his secret power, because he doesn't know about that yet. The real reason he's worried is because he thinks it's going to be this big PR nightmare and blowback on the company if the world finds out that the supervillain that the news has been hyping up recently winds up being their actual sweetheart character that they've loved for so long. Is the same basic idea with what's going on with Homelander on the side too, like the world learning about what he's really like, which Starlight basically outs on her social media at the end of the episode, which is meant to be a parallel for her during season one when she outed what the Deep had done to her. She basically does the exact same thing. Homelander also references Black Noir being on Soldier Boy's payback team years ago, thinking that he's more loyal to him, like more of a friend to him, but then right after that, Black Noir rips his tracker out so that Vought can't track him, probably so that he can go to ground, and we'll find out what his relationship with Soldier Boy really was that long ago. The Tornado Twins tried to throw him under the bus when Soldier Boy confronted him about what happened with the Russians, but I think the idea is that he wasn't ultimately responsible. Black Noir is just trying to be practical, like, oh, I'll take my tracker out so I can go to ground and nobody can track me. But Soldier Boy was not wrong when he basically said that he's been Vought's patsy this whole time. Like he said, the body cam on him that Stan Edgar has been using to monitor everything that's been going on on the DL. The other funny moment here with Ashley, like there are a couple funny moments with Ashley during the episode, but she's actually worried for a hot second about Homelander actually killing her. Like she thinks it could be a possibility because she realizes that the Deep is totally incompetent. Like she's worried that the Deep is going to mess this up and Homelander will come back and kill her. Then they have all these Captain America Avengers style jokes with Soldier Boy acclimating to modern society, the same way that Captain America did during the Avengers movies. Like his version of the beginning of the Winter Soldier movie with them clowning on Captain America. Internet, Bluetooth, those aren't real words, you're just making those up. 
The whole joke about them not having the Oriental sauce is a big Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce joke. If you don't know about the Szechuan sauce incident, that was actually a big deal a couple years ago. McDonald's used to make the sauce when the animated Mulan movie came out many, many years ago during the 90s. This is branded tie-in. They stopped making it pretty quickly after that, like way back in the 90s, long time ago. But recently, Rick Sanchez yelled about it in a Rick and Morty season three episode, and as a result, set off this huge craze, and McDonald's tried to bring the sauce back as a limited time event. It turned into a huge debacle. It was nuts. I think I even made a video about it a couple years ago. Like, that's how big a deal it was. When Soldier Boy jokes that they won D-Day back during World War II because they were high on bennies and snorts a bunch of them, he's talking about just regular amphetamines. Because back then, they were still legal, and the military gave them to soldiers to pop like candy just to keep them alert during battle. Like, it was actually a real thing. They had this running joke about Soldier Boy giving off this low-level radiation as part of the side effect of his power. It's basically like a nuclear-level power, like a small nuclear bomb that goes off every time he sets off his ability. And the more agitated he gets throughout their conversation, the higher the level of radiation he gives off. So Huey just keeps measuring him like, oh man, this is getting kind of bad here. There's also this whole running subplot with his PTSD because every time he hears a Russian song, he kind of blacks out like he has PTSD and he winds up losing control of his ability and claiming that he doesn't remember what happened. Like he tells Butcher later, wait, what just happened? Right after he gets done leveling the entire hero gasm house. Huey also sees this weird residue on his finger. I think that's meant to be a weird side effect of the temporary compound V because earlier they teased that it might have some weird side effects and he is an addict. So I think that's just going to get worse and worse and worse for him. Then because his abilities have worn off, they have this big joke about him not being able to lift Soldier Boy's shield. That's also meant to be a bit of a backdoor Captain America Easter egg because Vibranium, Captain America's shield, is meant to be virtually weightless and Soldier Boy's shield is made by Vought just out of regular metal, so it's super heavy. They make their deal with him to kill Homelander, Soldier Boy, I've come to bargain, again. Their side of the deal is just helping him find all the members of the payback team so that he can kill them. Black Noir is probably going to be one of the hardest ones for him to find just because he ripped his tracker out. They set up the whole thing with Kimiko's popsicle. The question on it, why did the photo go to jail? The answer is because he was framed. Because picture, framed, haha, -ha, yeah, like very funny joke. But later she winds up using that popsicle to stab the hell out of little Nina's men. The whole thing with little Nina is that she's trying to force Frenchie to come back and be her lapdog and just do whatever she says. So that's why she's captured both of the girls and are threatening them. But the big reveal here is that Kimiko realizes that she's always been a violent person. It had nothing to do with a compound V. Like, that's not what made her violent. That's meant to be a parallel for Huey's big reveal at the end of the episode where he reveals that he was always kind of resentful at Starlight for being the one with superpowers and him being so weak. The No No The Deep's video was supposed to be like the cringiest thing during the episode, but also A-Train's whole fake campaign here about hyping up his African roots is also meant to be like the cringiest video you've ever seen. Even Ashley's like, oh my god. The overlay here, Vought Images, is just their version of Getty Images. Pretty much all the TV networks inside the boys' universe are Vought-controlled networks, too. So, like, Vought Soul is meant to be a reference to the Soul Network, which is a real-life network. But Vought owns hundreds of TV networks. All the news shows that they go on, even the one later during the episode, that's controlled by Vought. So they just control what people hear, what they see. There's this real interesting thing going on with Ashley's character, too. She kind of loses it on A-Train, and I believe this is the first time she stood up so brazenly to a person with superheroes on the Seven. So I think the idea is that this will continue, but she does look like she's going to crap her pants the minute he leaves the room. This is also meant to set up that moment with Huey and A-Train where he apologizes for killing his girlfriend, and then later himself winds up killing Blue Hawk for revenge. Even though they're being kind of ambiguous with the way the A-Train lied down there, had that heart episode, I think he'll be fine. It's just that he's sinking a little bit lower and lower. Like, things will get worse for him as time goes on before they get better. I'd make more jokes about what Blue Hawk was getting up to at that party before A-Train took him out, but the video would probably get demonetized. Even talking a little bit about some of the stuff that happened at Herogasm would probably get the video demonetized. The other really cool thing that they did in the episode is they have this scene where Homelander hallucinates talking to himself in the mirror, but the way they played, they played kind of like a Moon Knight scene as if this is dissociative identity that he has inside him that's been around this whole time since he was a kid. Because when he's talking to this alternate personality, he says, what happened when we used to get thrown in the bad room? I used to take care of us. Like, this has been happening since he was a little kid. So just like Moon Knight, he developed these dissociative identities, or at least this one. I don't know if there's others inside there, when they were a little kid. But it sounds like it's the other personality who's the violent one, and the one who's controlling the body right now is just like the normal one who's a little bit meeker. Like, he's the Stephen Grant, and the one in the mirror is the Jake Lockley version of Homelander. I think this is meant to be a sly wink at the comic book storyline, because in the comics, the difference was there was an actual clone of Homelander, without getting completely into spoiler territory for the comics, because they're not doing this 
on the TV show. What they've done with that copy of Homelander on the TV show is they said that it's actually dissociative identity. So in the comics, there's this copy of Homelander who does all the terrible stuff that Homelander gets blamed for. When really we find out that Homelander is actually meant to be like a normal person, like he didn't do any of the crazy stuff that people thought that he did. It was actually the copy pretending to be him the whole time. So I think maybe on the TV show, they might try to say that it's the other personality who's done all the really WTF stuff that Homelander is seen doing during the show. Like which personality is in control of the body when he's doing all this crazy stuff? Because it seems during their couple conversations they have, like the later conversation is silent. We don't hear what the personality is telling him in the mirror. It sounds like this other personality, at least in their first conversation, wants to take over the body, wants them to become like the craziest possible version of Homelander they could become. So that might wind up being like a final season thing where the crazy Homelander personality takes over the body. Kind of like the Moon Knight TV show where Jake Lockley takes over the body at the end of the series. Post all your theories in the comments below though. Do you think that was an actual alternate identity inside the mirror or do you think they're trying to say something else is going on here? Back with Soldier Boy, they have him watching this funny old 80s movie that he made with the payback team just complaining about his teammates. There's also a Wilhelm scream in there too. It's like the 80s version of a Dawn of the Seven type of movie that Vought used to make. They have him make a bunch of awkward Cosby jokes because obviously he's been gone for like 30 plus years so he doesn't realize what's actually happened to Cosby in real life. He even makes a joke about Cosby making strong drinks which was all about what Cosby got blamed for, all the things that he was on trial for that he did to these women. Then the whole thing with Soldier Boy talking about how he wanted sons, there's this crazy theory that he actually might be the genetic father of Homelander. So the whole idea with Homelander being created on the show is that he didn't have a traditional father or a traditional mother. He was basically created in a petri dish. Then they use artificial insemination to just have a woman carry him to term. And because he's meant to be a literal upgrade and they used Soldier Boy as a template for Homelander, the biological material like the sperm that they use actually came from Soldier Boy, so Soldier Boy would literally be his father. There are a couple references to that later in the episode when they actually duke it out, and that was a great part of the episode too, when they all just have their big battle royale at the end of the episode. But that's what Homelander is talking about when he says, I'm the upgrade to you. Like he is metaphorically and literally an upgrade, like Vought literally tried to upgrade their compound V when they created him. The whole reason that Soldier Boy refuses to tell the other boys though about what happened with his explosion in Midtown is just him not wanting to admit his own PTSD problems. Like he hates being weak and he makes fun of other men saying that they're not manly men. So he doesn't want to acknowledge any of the mental problems that he's having. That's probably also going to get worse too. Like he'll keep blacking out and losing control of his power. Then they're pretty clear on what's going on with this whole Victoria Newman scene where she comes clean to Starlight about popping everyone's heads. She basically tries to offer her a deal just like the boys made with Soldier Boy. Like it's just just as bad a deal, like she's being just as dirty as the other guys. She wants to get rid of Homelander too, but she's willing to be really bad to do it. Even though she does threaten Starlight's life, like you see her nose bleed, like she was getting ready to pop her head, like she was kind of squeezing a little bit, she doesn't actually want to kill Starlight. She's just trying to say that if you tell everyone about me, I will definitely try to kill you. Even though Starlight came clean at the end of the episode, she did not mention Victoria Newman either. So Victoria Newman, still in the clear right now. People still do not realize that she's a secret superhero. Then there's so many things that we can say about this Herogasm scene. Like there are a couple different scenes at Herogasm. Like you have Starlight Herogasm, then you have Huey and Butcher, Soldier Boy Herogasm. But sort of setting up all the different conflicts that happen at this big event, Mother's Milk explains how Soldier Boy actually killed his family because we've seen a couple flashbacks this season. They were collateral damage from one of Soldier Boy's takedowns of a couple unrelated car thieves. He was basically doing the same thing you saw Homelander doing during the opening scene of season one, like he just punts that dude to some other person's car like a block away, not even bothering to turn around to look to see the dude land, like he just punted him and then just continued talking to the camera. Pretty much all superheroes are like that. That's what Starlight is talking about at the end of the episode. All these superheroes, they don't care about you. In Homelander, he's the worst. But when they get to Herogasm, it's a big flash from the past because Love Sausage answers the door. He was the same dude that Mother's Milk almost got killed by during season two with his power. That's why he freaks out so bad. And they reveal in the TV show universe, it's Mother's Milk who gives him the Love Sausage name. In the comics though, he always had the Love Sausage name. And you can freeze frame like every single frame that happens at this house, like all over the place everywhere, your eye is just drawn to so many WTF things. And even though there are many, many superheroes all over the place wearing versions of their costumes in various states of undress, I think they're all meant to be versions from the comics. But some of them you do recognize from either previous seasons or from previously on this season. Like the Ant-Man parody hero Termite from that super WTF opening scene in episode one, he's also here. RIP to him because Homelander literally just squashes him with his boot. 
R.I.P. to Mother's Milk's clothing, he gets someone's giant load blown all over him. Like everything that happens at this house is just so gross. It's gonna take him like an entire year and a lot of therapy to feel clean again after that. I already talked about the big soldier boy in Stormfront joke. I started this back in 1952 with this Liberty character. She was such a firecracker, totally not knowing that that was actually Stormfront, an actual Nazi. And remember, he fought during World War II for the Americans. The other funny Easter egg you may have noticed here too if you've been watching Umbrella Academy is Huey's wearing a Footloose t-shirt and during season three episode one of Umbrella Academy they actually do the Kenny Loggins dance using the same song from the Footloose movie. Umbrella Academy has nothing to do with the boys, it's just a funny coincidence that he's wearing the t-shirt and that airs on the same day. I already explained all the Blue Hawk stuff, but then they pay off the joke about the deep getting it on with fish, obviously with an octopus this time, also paying off the joke from earlier this season. Like they have all these jokes about the deep doing it with fish, which is meant to be a big Aquaman joke, people making jokes about Aquaman doing it with fish, like Peacemaker had a bunch of those kinds of jokes. But because this is the boys and this is Herogasm, like they literally have him do it, like he literally shows up with an octopus on his junk. The funny thing is too, when the house winds up blowing up later because of Soldier Boy's power, he's running away with the octopus still alive in a bag yelling at it like they're yelling at each other. We also find out that Huey's power can teleport other people too and just like him it only teleports organic matter so Starlight winds up naked too. It seems like for now though because of his big revelation that they're broken up but I think they ultimately kind of want to be hopeful with those two characters because Huey's meant to be so innocent on the show but they have this whole thing with him using the temporary compound B so I think it's probably going to be a while but eventually they'll probably get back together. When Soldier Boy is taking out the party they also reveal that his real name is Ben. We don't know what his last name is. They did show his VOT file in episode one but a lot of the the details were blurred out like it wasn't quite high res enough to see everything on that file. The idea is that originally he started out as this common criminal that Vought found in a prison, they just took him and used him for experiments with Compound B and that's how he became Soldier Boy. It's meant to be a big parody on Captain America because obviously Steve Rogers was meant to be like the best person in the program whereas Soldier Boy was just like a common criminal that they found in prison that day. Then obviously probably one of the best parts of the episode is the Homelander Battle Royale. So there are a couple different parts of this fight here. You have Homelander versus Soldier Boy where they go at each other and they kind of talk it back and forth like you're just a cheap knockoff of me. No I'm the upgrade. Then you have Homelander versus Butcher with him just completely losing it and I love the way that Homelander reacts to all the temporary compound V powers like what did you do you're cheating you're cheating the deal's off they almost have him dead to rights but like i said homelander is so much more powerful than everyone else that it takes all of them to hold him down and they still can't keep him down permanently like he takes off and escapes you also have to remember that because mave was the one that was giving them the temporary compound v and now she's under lock and key like they have her at this special retreat under lock and key they can't get more temporary compound v so they're going to be out of powers pretty soon then the other biggest reveal at the end of the episode is Starlight using her social media to reveal the truth about everything that Vought's been doing, what Homelander's been doing, what Soldier Boy was doing this whole time. She reveals the truth about all superheroes not really caring about people at all. The funny connection to Thor Love and Thunder in the Marvel Universe right now is that Gore is going around killing all the gods in the Marvel Universe because they're terrible people and they don't care about any of their subjects. It's the same basic principle with superheroes on the boys. They don't care about anybody but themselves. And if you look at all the comments on her social media post here while it's happening, it seems like most of her followers believe what she's saying. So we'll see what kind of blowback there is in the public in next week's episode. But I think they're planning on doing at least like four or five seasons, maybe a little bit more of the boys, like they'll keep going. So I don't think this is meant to be like the end of the boys show, but they are making it feel like they're heading towards an end game type of scorched earth scenario. So it'll be interesting to see how they swerve on that in the season finale. But if there's any other Easter eggs in the episode that you spotted that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments and my full episode seven video will post next week. Everyone click here for my brand new Thor Love and Thunder trailer video, Thor versus the Celestials, and click here for my full Miss Marvel episode three video in Shang-Chi Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.